let's say you're going on vacation, flights are booked, which GMT would you choose? Would it be the Tudor Black Bay GMT or the Grand Seiko Heritage SBGJ201? Black dial or white dial? Swiss or Japanese? Blue and red bicolor bezel or sleek and minimal polished steel? Luminescent markers or beveled indices? The choice is yours. Welcome to Dual Time. We are pitting two popular GMTs against each other in a head-to-head -head matchup to see who comes out on top. We're gonna to be comparing the movements, the bracelets, the clasps, the dials, the hands, the feel on the wrist to pick a winner. Let's start by looking at our tail of the tape. The Tudor Black Bay GMT comes in at 41 millimeters in diameter, 50 millimeters lug to lug, and 15 millimeters thick with the lug width of 22. The Grand Seiko comes in at 40 millimeters in diameter, 46.2 lug to lug, and 14 millimeters thick with a lug width of 19 millimeters. Both watches are made of stainless steel with stainless steel bracelets. The Tudor uses the in-house MT5652 True GMT movement. We'll talk about that more later. It has a 70 hour power reserve COSC certification with an accuracy of minus four plus six seconds per day. The Grand Seiko also has an in-house movement, the 9S86 high beat movement, also a true GMT with a 55 hour power reserve and an accuracy of plus five minus three seconds per day. Both watches feature screw down crowns. The Tudor has 200 meters water resistance while the Grand Seiko is water resistant to 100 meters. Pricing on the Tudor is 4,300 at retail and the Grand Seiko comes in at 6,300 retail. Now let's talk about this Grand Seiko. It has the 44 GS style case that represents the three pillars of the brand's grammar of design. We're talking about sharp angles instead of curves, wide, flat dials and hands that catch a lot of light, and polished surfaces with no distortion. The Grand Seiko case is certainly more architectural than the Tudor, although this Zeratsu polishing does catch a lot of light, but also a lot of fingerprints and a lot of scratches. Still, it's a noticeably beautiful case with a lot of thought put into its design. The Tudor is a little more bread and butter. It's what you'd expect from an oyster case. The beauty here takes a little bit of a closer look, but you do have nice touches with these kind of polished bevels interacting with the brushing on the lugs. If you're a Rolex or Tudor fanboy, you know the oyster case, you love it. If you're like everyone else, you think it's fine. It gets the job done. The dials here sit in stark contrast to one another. The Tudor GMT, comes in an opaline white finish and this classic matte black. You have super luminova hour markers encircled in steel, and you have Tudor's signature snowflake handset. These snowflake hands are an acquired taste, which is a polite way to say that they're a little bit ugly. The Grand Seiko dial is spectacular as usual. This particular one is inspired by Mount Awate near the Grand Seiko manufacturer. And as the saying goes, you look at it once to check the time, and you look at it again just to look at it. The hands here are finished by hand and they are razor sharp, even up close. You also have an applied logo and applied framing around the date window. In terms of GMT hands, you have this nice shock of this blue spear here on the Grand Seiko versus the typical red that you'd see on the Tudor. Simply put, if you're a sucker for details, the Grand Seiko is gonna be right up your alley. Now the Tudor has this blue and red bicolor bi-directional rotating bezel that is quite reminiscent of the Rolex GMT Master Pepsi. That's great if you love the look of that watch but don't wanna spend the hefty price tag that comes with it. Although I will say, when you compare the Tudor bezel to the Rolex bezel, the Tudor feels oddly minimal with the way that they've applied the type here and the colors are not as vibrant on this aluminum as you'll get with the Rolex Cerachrom ceramic bezel. We have two screw down crowns here that are quite comparable. Tudor may have a slight advantage in terms of usability, but I will say that the Grand Seiko crown is much better integrated into the case versus the Tudor one here, which actually protrudes out a little bit. So in terms of better design visual appeal to pick a winner, definitely gonna be the Grand Seiko. Now we describe both movements here as true or traveler style GMTs. That means you can set the hour hands independently for added convenience when you land in a new time zone. That's a marginal improvement over cheaper GMT movements, but much like an extra few inches of legroom, 
Small details do make a difference when traveling. Both movements are accurate to a few seconds per day, and that shows the technical capabilities that both of these brands have. After all, the Swiss and the Japanese are probably the two most punctual cultures on the planet. I guess you could say the Grand Seiko has a slight, slight advantage here in terms of accuracy, but if you're worried about a few seconds per day, I'd be willing to bet you're also the kind of person that gets to the airport 10 hours before your flight. Now the Grand Seiko features a high beat movement here at 36,000 BPH that allows the second hand to very elegantly glide across the dial. But I would say Tudor has the advantage in that the hands are loomed and so let's say you're on a long flight when they dim the cabin lights, you'll actually be able to see what time it is versus just the simply polished hands here. And in the movement matchup, the winner is Tudor. Both calibers have a lot going for them, but you have a higher power reserve at 70 hours versus 55. You have your silicon hairspring here. And because of this bezel here as well, you can track three time zones instead of the standard two. We have two variations on the three link bracelet here. Apologies for the factory stickers. People often complain about Seiko and Grand Seiko bracelets while praising the structural fortitude of Tudor and Rolex watches. And having these in hand, I can definitely see why. If you squiggle the bracelets like a snake, that is not a technical term, you can feel how much more solid the Tudor is versus this Grand Seiko. There's just more wiggle room between the lengths of the Grand Seiko and over time that will stretch the bracelet out and have it droop down more and more with each passing year. Meanwhile, if you do the same test with the Tudor, there's much lower tolerance, it's much tighter and much sturdier than you get with a Grand Seiko. The clasp is another point of departure between these two watches and kind of points more stylistically to their ethos where the Tudor is more of a tool watch and the Grand Seiko is a little bit dressier. So for example, with the Tudor, we have more options as far as micro adjustment and you have this flip lock here for added security. Meanwhile, the Grand Seiko has a push button clasp. It's a little sleeker, a little sexier, but not as secure as you would get with the Tudor. Now, as far as downsides for the bracelets, Grand Seiko does have these polished links here, which catch a little bit of light, a little more visual entry, but they, of course, attract more scratches as well. The Tudor, you will get some minor criticism for these faux rivets here. Historically, vintage Tudors had rivets on the sides of the bracelets. This is an aesthetic callback, but people do take issue with it because it is a purely decorative element for what is a function first watch. Another interesting point, which I found a little contradictory, is that we have drilled lug holes on the Grand Seiko, but not on the Tudor. Funny thing about that is it makes straps easier to swap in and out on the Grand Seiko, but you have a 19 millimeter lug width here, which is very atypical versus your kind of standard 22. So even though it's easier to move straps in and out, you have fewer straps to choose from. So with all that in mind, we had to pick a winner as far as hardware, class, bracelets, Tudor by a mile. Finally, we're tackling the question of wearability. That is, how does it feel on the wrist? This is very important to consider because if a watch doesn't wear well, you're not gonna actually get a lot of use out of it, no matter how attractive it is or historic it is or how much money you spent on it. And the first thing you'll notice is there's a significant weight difference between these two. The Tudor is considerably heavier than the Grand Seiko. That's because it is larger in every dimension and all that extra steel really adds up. We should also note that the Tudor GMT is bulkier than the Rolex GMT in every dimension. So if the Pepsi is already about as big as you wanna go in a watch, this Tudor is likely gonna feel a little excessive. Also, now that Tudor is slimming down their lineup, these older style ones are gonna feel that much chunkier by comparison. Next, let's talk about girth. These are thick watches, 14 millimeters for the Grand Seiko and 15 for the Tudor. They're both a little bit excessive in my opinion. I mean, Bulgari has an Octo Finissimo chronograph GMT that's seven millimeters thick. That's half the height for twice the complications. The winner in terms of wearability is the Grand Seiko. On paper, this watch is certainly more manageable and the way that Grand Seiko divides up the thickness between the thin mid case, the bezel and the case back, plus the sloping architecture that you have here just makes it hug the wrist better than the Tudor. The Tudor is a large watch on paper and you really feel those extra millimeters when it's on the wrist. So while the Tudor is more robust in construction, the Grand Seiko is just much more ergonomic and that's why it's the winner for wearability. Taking all factors into consideration from 
design to construction to wearability to details, the winner is the Grand Seiko SBGJ201. It's comparable to the Tudor where it counts and those little extra details help justify that higher price. This is, of course, a highly subjective review full of personal bias and bad jokes. You, the watch enthusiast crowd, are the real deciding vote here. So drop a comment below explaining who wins and why. I'm Thomas Hendricks with Chrono24 and GMT-5, which is to say New York City. Thanks so much for watching Dual Time, and we'll see you next time.